kicking it off with Greece because actually you're pretty you're pretty much of the view that contagion is limited and get into the rest of so southern Europe. Yeah, in, in Spain in particular, people have been making extrapolations of Greece onto Spain and is it really valid? Um, looking at the polls, Podemos has obviously, uh, its popularity has picked up quite considerably but uh, I'll post the elections on Sunday. But if you look at the polls since the start of the year, they have been declining in popularity by about six percentage points. The anti-austerity party. Yes. So the, the, the party that's really picked up is Citizens. It's, it's risen 12% since the start of the year. Still a low share of the vote, but they're very much a pro-business party. So I don't think it's quite the same story that Greece is. Um, and consequently, uh, Spain trades on around 1.2 times price to book quite con in contrast as Germany which is trading on two times price to book and if you look at say the S&P versus the DAX the DAX is at the highest since 2001 in, 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 on just on that sort of technical term and so if you if you like Europe you like the story of uh, loose monetary policy stimulating equities then um, I think uh, Germany's not the place anymore it's got to be you've got to look for value and where perhaps sentiments a little bit beaten up in Italy and Spain certainly fit that bill well, I mean, it, Spain has managed, the IBEX is up 11%, obviously the broader market is something different, and Italy's up 25% so far on the year. Um, I mean, that, that's a bit of a bullish call. I mean, when I look at the industry groups, so you think there's more mileage to go I in Italy for the, it's, for the it's back a, half? It's a, slight, it's a slightly relative call. So we, <laughs> we own Europe, and actually we've been paring down, we're still overweight Europe. Okay. We've been paring down, moving into a, a bit of cash in our portfolios. But if you, if you look relative within Europe, that's where the value is, and that's what we want to focus on. We don't feel that Germany offers that, that value play anymore. So. Where, where, where is the sector value then? I mean, autos have, have I mean, phenomenal run, 29%. Yeah. Financial services up 25%. Healthcare, healthcare globally is actually the leader on the MSCI World Index, up 23%. When you look at your positions in Europe, t tell me, are, are you taking any money out of autos? So, uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't own auto specifically. Um, the, the problem is that uh, the, the sector's disp valuation dispersion is huge because right. of low yielding environment. People have gone for the safe haven, so healthcare, not so much utilities, there's a lot of regulatory problems in, in, in They're the worst performing index. But, yeah, yeah, but staples, uh, consumer discretionary, autos as mm -hmm. well, very extreme valuations. The only areas where you see some pockets of, of value are the energy sector, the material sector, which is quite small in Europe overall, and funnily enough, the financial sector. So there's still this story in financials of uh, 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 asset or balance sheet uh, restructuring, but now we feel that's close to coming to, to, to an end, and we could start to see, whilst dividends are weak, we could start to see dividend growth there. Talk to me about M&A. We've just had the biggest tech takeover in history. Argo getting into, into Broadcom, $37 billion. It's a 16% premium. Now, is this a wave of M&A we're going to see? Is this going to be spilling into Europe? And are you a buyer of M&A stories? So we feel that M&A is really starting to kick off now. There's been quite a few full starts in the last three to four years. But th there's a combination of conditions now that make it very conducive for M&A. You've got low market volatility, essentially low political volatility, which has led to a pickup in corporate confidence. Um, and also there's a threat of a rate rise. If you want to leverage to buy out a competitor, it's best to do it now. now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, and also there's sets of dislocation, particularly in the energy sector. There are some opportunities. But for us, it's, we're a little bit cautious because when, uh, for instance, CEOs start engaging in share buybacks, to us that's an indication that they have run out of ideas for growth. And another way of using your cash is to take out competitors. And again, that's a signal that perhaps maybe margins have peaked. They're, they're running out of ideas. So it's, and if you, say, back test the idea of M&As and look at some sort of M&A indices, um, it's quite hard in the long run to, to, to make good money out of stories unless you're a really very successful event-driven stock picker, which I wouldn't say we are at Coos. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> self deprecating <laughs> you're more than well, it's, it's very high risk you know we our clients are typically quite uh, low risk clients and um, it, it adds a lot of volatility to your portfolio taking an m a sort of strategy um, just very briefly on, on, on China, I mean, there's some great stories. Uh, you know, the volatility is really coming home to roost. At one stage, we were down 4% today. We, we managed to get a small gain, but dropped by 7% yesterday. Uh, volatility is really beginning to mount. 
Um, how much exposure would you have to China? Do you believe that it's, uh, it, it's still got mileage? We are overweight China, uh, and in the eight shares rather than the A shares, um, China, the eight shares are uh, a lower beta play typically uh, than the A shares. If you look at valuation uh, premiums, the A shares is extreme. It's back to almost, I think, 2002 levels. So valuation is quite extreme. So we are starting to get a little bit nervous. We are considering our positions, but uh, we, we hold China for now. Uh, a lot of the positive stories about um, monetary policy. Nervous.